Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm gonna be creating an enchanted witch's cottage. For my project today, I'm going to be using this birdhouse that I bought from TK Maxx. It was 50% off, so it was definitely a bargain, but I wanted to give it a bit of a Halloween makeover. I love the details on this piece, but obviously we need to fix up the colors. But my first step is going to be to remove the additions that they've had on the back. As I said, this is technically a birdhouse, so they've got an attachment for hanging it. There's an area where you can open it up. And I'm going to be removing that, and I'm going to be doing the inside of this in another video. I then took out my hairdryer, and I am going to reheat the glue that's holding in the red flowers in the window boxes. These don't really go with the look that I'm going for plus I'm going to be doing some painting so these would just get wrecked anyway so I'm going to remove those. I'm then going to be using Paint Couture's Buttercream Chalk Paint. I'm going to pour out some into a plastic container and then I'm going to be using Salt Wash. I'm just adding that to thicken up the paint, give it a bit of texture so that it's not as flat. I want this to be like an enchanted witch's cottage. So my vision for this is that it's a a house that has had a lot of age. It's been around for over a hundred years. And so the siding and the paint would be a bit worn. There would definitely be some texture there. So that's my vision for this. I ended up doing two coats of this, um, but laying down that first coat of salt wash, it really helps with adhesion too. So I didn't have to worry about doing any priming. So I'm going to be going around and anywhere that the yellow paint is, I am going to be adding this buttercream mixture. I've seen a lot of witches' houses, doll houses that have been made over and often they're black but I wanted to go with a lighter colour option for this instead. So as I said going around and everywhere that we have that yellow including the inside as I said I'm going to be doing the inside in a future video so make sure you keep your eye out for that one. So I am painting the inside with the buttercream and then once I'd finished doing that I did let that dry completely. I then took out Paint Couture's Pitch Black Chalk Paint and I'm going to be going around the window frames with this black paint. Now, because this is a birdhouse, obviously I don't have any glass in the windows. There's already been black painted on those. So with that in mind, I'm still gonna do black around the windowsill, but I'm gonna leave the inner part of the window white. So you still have that definition. You can still see the window panes. I don't want them to get lost and, and just look like a, a black square. I only ended up doing one coat on each of the window sills. Pitch black chalk paint is very highly pigmented, so that's all it needed. But also, I'm not going for perfect. This is a witch's cottage. It is something that has been around for over 100 years. So in my mind, it has weathered away. There's going to be areas that aren't perfect, and that is completely fine. That will just add to that vintage aged look. So I'm going to continue, as you can see, working around the dollhouse, going around the window frames. Also, I'm loving how the black looks on the um, architraves and, and the railings. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is what is going to give this house that Halloween spooky vibe. Once I had finished painting the railings, I did decide to go in and add black to the front door as well. Now on the side, one of the window panes was a little bit damaged, so I ended up having to add some filler to one of them. So I will go in and add a bit of black to try and tie that in with the rest of the window frame there. Next, I'm going to focus on the roof. I took out Paint Couture's Black Chiffon Glaze and I'm going to be adding that over the top of the wooden shingles and then I'm going to use a wet wipe to wipe some of it back. I went with this color because I do want a darker roof and I wanted to see how it looked uh, stained dark as opposed to just being painted. So at this stage, I was just working out how I liked it because uh, Paint Couture's glazes can be used as a stain. They are perfect for that. Um, and this is just what I thought I would start off with. Thank you. 
Once I had finished adding the glaze, I did decide that it wasn't quite dark enough. So I ended up going in with some of that pitch black chalk paint and I'm brushing it over the, the top, but then I'm also wiping it back. So treating it a little bit more like a stain. So I still wanna be able to see some of the uh, black chiffon stained timber underneath, but I wanted it to be darker. This is a witch's cottage. This is for Halloween. So I do want it to have more of that uh, moody, uh, dark vibe. So I just continued adding the black Black, uh, chalk paint, wiping it back a little bit so we could see some of that um, other tone underneath. And I think this definitely also added to that weathered and worn look as well. Next, I want to add some detail to the front uh, porch section. So I took out my tape measure and I'm measuring how long and also how wide that section is because I'm not gonna be able to actually get in there and do much. So I'm gonna be using cardboard. I'm just measuring out how much uh, I'm gonna need for the floor space on that front porch and just making my little markings there. And then I'm just gonna use my scissors to cut that out. Now I am going to just have it be a straight run. I will do the front step section and uh, separately. I then took out Paint Couture's embossing medium and I'm going to be applying that with a plastic spatula over the top of the cardboard over the top of a brick style stencil. This is one that I had in my stash and the scale is perfect for uh, pavers or, or tiles and I just thought this would be a really nice touch. It would give it um, more of a, a custom look and this is where we can start adding in the character to this piece. So I'm just continuing to add the embossing medium. I don't need it to be perfect. We want these to look old and weathered. Once I've got that section organized, I'm going to reposition the stencil. I'm keeping the other side up a little bit so I don't smear what I've already done because it's not completely dry. So I was just a bit impatient here. So if you're worried about getting it perfect, let it dry in between doing those different sections. When that was dry, I also had a look at doing the front step, but I needed to cut it to size. So I've just got a little rectangle of cardboard. I'm going to cut it to size and then I'm going to reposition the stencil I was just using and add some more of that embossing medium. When that was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Grounded Mineral Paint and I'm going to be adding that over the top of the dry embossing medium. When that was dry, I took out that black chiffon glaze again, and I'm going to be running that over the top of the textured surface. And I'm loving how it's catching in those brick details. And then I'm using a wet wipe to pull it back, but I do want some of it to remain in those crevices. And also I'm just sort of dabbing at it as well to give it that age. I'm then gonna take out Eileen's Tacky Glue. This is a great medium to use when you are creating doll houses and miniatures, and I'm going to slip that on the inside there and then press it down. I'm then going to add some more of that glue to our little step section that we had to do separately and position that in place. Next, I wanna give this house some more age. So I took out Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to start adding it in sections on the house. I'm applying it over the top of the paint and then I'm using a wet wipe to pull some of it back. I'm gonna allow it to sit in certain areas, again, to give it that look of age and have it be in some of those crevices where it would naturally accumulate. And I'm just going to continue to work my way around the house adding this glaze. Now, obviously, if this style wasn't for you, you could leave this out, but as we are going for a Halloween look, I thought that this would be perfect. I'm also going to add it over the top of the white window panes that we left. This is going to make them less stark, have it sort of blend in with the look a little bit better. And I'm just going to keep going until I have the entire sections where we have that buttercream chalk paint covered with the glaze. If I inspire you to try any of the Paint Couture products used in today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. 
If you are wanting to give this a try and make your own witch's cottage for Halloween, these techniques are things that you can do on dollhouses that you find at the thrift store. You could make your own little room box perhaps instead. I've even seen it done using cardboard. So these are just some ideas on how you can take something that looks new and you can give it that spooky Halloween vibe. Once the glaze was completely dry, I took out my Gorilla Super Glue Gel and also just this little jewelry attachment that I had in my stash. And I'm going to add some glue where the door handle would be. And I'm going to attach this little jewelry bead and have that in place to be our door handle. Next, I took out a piece of grapevine wreath that I had just sort of cut off and I had lying around and I'm going to wind it through uh, the porch railing there and wrap it around a few times. I want this to look a bit old, a little bit decrepit, like the plants are sort of taking over. It's definitely going to give it a bit of that spooky vibe as well. And I thought that this would just be the perfect touch. So I'm just going to keep manipulating it until I have it where I want it. It, and then I'm going to use some hot glue to secure the bottom part in place. And I'm going to add a few other little dabs of glue here and there just to hold it where I want it to be. I'm then going to take another piece of grapevine wreath and repeat the same process on the other side. I'm going to glue it down on the side of the porch there and then I'm going to wind it in through and around that pole. Once I have it where I want it to be, I'll add a few little dabs of hot glue. I then decided to add another piece of the grapevine wreath on the left hand side and have that winding uh, up the uh, pole there but then also have it going up around the side of the house so to give the house a bit more dimension and have that uh, detail going around the side as well. Next, I'm going to add some of my Sealy's Quick Set wood glue around the base part of the house. I'm going to spread that out with my fingers. And then I'm going to take some forest moss that I had in my stash and I'm going to start pressing that down into the glue. This needs to look like a sort of uh, overgrown front yard uh, and this is perfect for that. So I'm just going to work in sections so that glue doesn't dry too fast, just pressing down that forest moss into that glue. I'm then going to add some more glue on the other side of the house and repeat that same process, spreading that out, adding some more of that forest moss. I'm going to do it on the other side as well, but I'm not going to do it at the back of the house. I then added some more of my glue to the top part of the roof. Again, we want this to look a little bit dilapidated. We want it to look spooky. So I'm going to put some Spanish moss this time up on the top of the house. So maybe there's a, a big uh, tree nearby that's dropping this on the roof. And I'll also mix in a little bit of that forest moss as well. So we have a bit of variation in the color of the natural elements that are up there. I'm also going to add a bit of glue to the front right and left hand sides and just sort of continue that uh, towards the front part of the house. To disguise the little dabs of hot glue, I took some of that pitch black chalk paint and I'm just going to go over the top of the glue. This does help hide it a little bit and make it less obvious. I then took out a mini bird's nest that I had in my stash and I'm going to pull the center part of that out and then chop that off. We'll use that for something else. And then I'm going to pull a little bit more off. I want to make a wreath for the front door, something that I think a witch would have. And then I'm going to add a dab of hot glue on the top part of the front door and glue that little wreath in place. And then I did decide to add a little bit more glue underneath just to give it uh, a bit more stability. Next, I want to make a broom for our witch. So I've taken a piece of grapevine wreath, a thicker part. I'm adding some hot glue and then I'm going to take some of that uh, bird's nest 
that I cut off from the center. And I'm going to glue that in place. That is going to be the bottom part of the broom. So I'm just hot gluing that in place. And then I'm going to take my scissors and, and trim off the bottom a little bit uh, just to give it a bit more of a sort of flat base, make it look a little bit more like a broom. I then added a bit more glue around the top part of the broom and I'm going to be attaching some twine. So I just sort of started wrapping that around uh, in place. This was a little bit uh, fiddly, so I did have to be careful not to burn myself. I am using a low temp heat gun though, so uh, it's not too bad when it comes to burns. And I'm just going to continue wrapping that around, pulling it through that hot glue. And uh, then once I'm happy with how many times I've wrapped that around, I'm going to use my scissors to cut that off. And then I'm going to add a little bit more glue and it will hold that in place. I think this has made the perfect primitive witch's broom. Next, I'm going to add some dried uh, gypsophila to the front part of the witch's house. I'm just sort of taking little bits of that, adding a little bit of that uh, tacky glue to it and then pressing it into the uh, moss that we have in the front garden. I think these make perfect um, sort of witchy looking flowers for this house. I'm also going to add some of that same glue to the uh, window boxes where we took the flowers out earlier and I'm going to add some of that gypsophila to the window boxes as well. Next, I'm going to cast a pumpkin from a mold that I had in my stash. I'm just pouring out equal parts A and B of a fast cast resin and I'm just going to also cast another pumpkin that I have. It's actually, I think, a candle mold. So I'm just going to see if it's going to be the right scale. I'm going to stir it really well for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to pour it out into the two different pumpkins that I think might work for our project. After about 10 minutes, they are ready to go and I can already tell that this one's going to be a little bit too big to sit on the windowsill. So I'm going to take out Pankachor's Firelight. We're going to add it to this pumpkin. Because it has that flat back, I'm going to be able to fit it on the front porch without it looking too crowded. I then took out Pinecone Chalk Paint by Pankachor. I'm going to add that to the stem. And then when that was dry, I took some of my Van Dyke Brown Glaze out and I'm going to add that to the pumpkin to age it up and, and give it a a bit more character and then I'm going to dab off the excess. Next I'm going to pull apart some cotton wool and I'm going to be sort of stretching it across some of the details on our witch's cottage to create the look of spider webs. Now I'm not the best at this, this is the first time I've tried this. If you have any tips on how to make it look a bit more realistic uh, and how to get it to attach let me know. <laughs> I just sort of stretched it over certain areas and corners where I think spider webs would be naturally occurring. And I think this is really the perfect touch for a witch's cottage. It definitely gives that spooky vibe. Finally, I'm going to attach my pumpkin using some hot glue. So I'm going to add a generous amount of that to the back of the pumpkin, and then I'm going to press it underneath the window on the right-hand side. And here's our finished witch's cottage. I love how this turned out. This was so fun and it is a completely different little house now. Perfect for Halloween. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.